ladies and gentlemen. Check out this incredible facility here in Brandon, South Dakota. Tonight we are competing here at the Houston Speedway for some Sunday racing. So excited to finally see this place. This is one of the racetracks I feel like throughout the United States, facility-wise, racetrack-wise. You see the Outlaws come here, you see other big series come here, and you always hear about it. You watch it on TV, and now tonight we're finally gonna get to take it on. Now one of the unique things about this track is you do pit in the infield. So we're trapped down here all night. There's gonna be a lot of action. We got 410 sprint cars, 305s, and some sort of late model division. Our black and red 18T is just down that way. Just like any other racetrack, we're taking this on like a normal race day. Gotta unload. You know, when I looked at this place, it to me reminds me of Skagit with just a little bit more banking. Similar in size, similar with our gear. And so that is actually a confidence booster right away because we run well at Skagit. So I figured, you know what? We're just gonna take our baseline from there. We're gonna unload here, see how it goes, and work and fine tune on it throughout the night. Like I said, this is just like any other race day, even though it's a brand new track. We're gonna have engine heat, we're gonna have hot laps, and then we're gonna roll into qualifying, and that will be the key to starting our night. So try to have some speed, try to get things going, and set us up to uh, you know start up front in tonight's feature. Houston's at full speed or are done. Did not, well, hey, now that I think about it, we qualified 14th at Knoxville yesterday. We were 14th tonight at Houston, so for some reason, and we finished yesterday 14th, so I don't know what it is, but uh, I would like to start improving. Uh, not bad, you know, ripped through one and two, good. I think both laps, felt like our car, we made improvements from hot laps to qualifying. This place is a fast little joint. I mean, you get moving around here, and things happen quick. I talked about how it reminds me of Skagit. It feels very similar. I think where I lost maybe my two tenths, which is the difference where I'm at to a quick time was just down in three and four. I just was off the curb too much. Like you can get on it and I think you almost it's easy to psych yourself out and be worried about being too buried in it. Um, and so I, I think I just turned too soon and then I'm off it throughout the whole corner and you just don't carry as much speed because you're not as much on the banking. That's my bad. I think our car's good, but um, we also maybe could have had a different gear that could have gave us a little bit more speed and that would have been helpful as well. Two tenths was the difference where we were at and the top of the charts. But I'm uh, gonna start I think from the third row of a heat race and we gotta start improving and try to pass cars and go forward.
been here from the heat race at Houston's 10 laps around the racetrack. I've talked about how this place reminds me of Skagit Speedway, but it's also got some California in it. Uh, just went out there and it's starting to widen uh, from bottom to top. A little bit of grip down low, and then it's got like a, a California style cushion that kind of gets knocked down as we run, but it also builds up, so it's constantly changing. We started fifth and finished fourth. I feel fortunate that we got one spot. I wish we could have got more because that only would have improved where we're gonna start for the A8 event, but we'll take it. Race car felt good. I felt a little bit more comfortable. Just gotta work on getting a little bit more grip and getting this car to where it's just a tiny bit more drivable. You have so much horsepower around a small track like this, it's easy to be erratic and all over. So just trying to calm the 18T down, find a little bit more drive as it is getting slick and starting to get, I mean, black, not in the sense of rubber, but just getting shiny and uh, get, you know, closer to the inside berm and closer to the outside wall. So that's what we like and we're gonna need if we're gonna have the opportunity to move forward here in 25 laps. So we got some track prep going on right now. It seems like they're just trying to help the racing surface. You know, it was so thick where the moisture was, you know, from the middle up that it's just taken a while to widen now. So I think they're out there kind of trying to till it, break it apart, and then maybe roll it in and then hope that as cars get out there and these features get going, it can get closer to the fence and kind of build the curb up higher. I see what they're trying to do. It's just tough. Uh, it's a little, it's already kind of, you know, not as warm as it was earlier. It's just later in the evening. We have a good amount of cars here, but there is only so many laps left. And it's tough, you know, never being to a racetrack, you know, you watch, you kind of see, but you don't notice the fine details as, you know, standing right here on the berm watching them do it. But what, you know, the rework or what them doing this is going to do, you know, obviously a regular can watch it and be like, all right, you know, have an idea on what the racetrack is going to be like now for the feature where us, we're kind of playing more of a guess game and we're just going off of what we've seen so far today uh, but overall here soon they should have uh, our starting lineups and we'll kind of see where the 18t will be rolling off So just got in for the feature. Felt like we made a, you know, not a lot of changes, but we just kind of are going in this direction of trying to find more grip, make the car to where we can move around. I think that's big here because it is hard to race because it stays narrow and it, it's gonna widen, but uh, it's just it's just hard to race. So we're trying to put our car in a position where we can kind of use any lane that we can make work on the racing surface. We're rolling off from 13th. Passing that car in the heat helped us, but qualifying just seems to be big with this format, so we weren't able to really dig ourselves out of a hole. So rolling off from seventh row inside, want to just work on um, you know keeping our nose clean and trying to uh, you know pick our way through the field and use restarts to our advantage or long green flag runs and just kind of getting uh, getting our normal rhythm and see where our race car is at and like I said build as build as much speed as we can and be aggressive. So A main events up next here at the Houston Speedway.
Yeah, it is. Oh, yep. Yeah. That car's completely destroyed here, um, unfortunately, for, uh, for the 20s. Ladies and gentlemen, just wrapped up the night here at Husits. All the fans finally cleared out. We're literally dang near one of the last ones in the pit area. And I got a fan that wants to be in the video. North Dakota Mike. North Dakota Mike, what did you think of today? I think you did really well. First time running on that track. I thought you did great. Um, if you'd have got Dobmeyer, you'd have made my day. I know. I almost <laughs> got Mark Dobmeyer. He's uh, he's obviously won so many races around here. Thank you for coming tonight. Saw our first, you know, here at Houston. What a beautiful racetrack. This yeah. place is um, it's incredible. Hopefully, if everything goes to plan, we'll be back here in a couple weeks. Like I said, phenomenal facility. Uh, pleasure to be here. So many great fans. South Dakota sure loves 410 wing sprint cars, and uh, I mean they got a they got a great place here in the Houston Speedway. We're going to load up, and we'll have a chance here to recap the night in a little bit. What a run. We started 13th, finished 7th, you know, uh, content with it. You know, I feel like we had a little bit of room for improvement. Maybe, like, you know, like we said, could have passed Mark Dobnire. We're right behind uh, Justin Henderson, just kind of in the mix. Uh, and overall, we, um, you know, we worked well with what we had, having to start back and, you know, moving forward. Well, I wanted to show you guys where I probably made a majority of my, my passes as I tried to get close to the front. That was off of turn two and down the back stretch. See, the bottom of this corner, it retained a lot of moisture right off the berm, and you could almost get, if you could hit it perfectly, you get your left front on it a tiny bit, and it would plant your right rear, and you could just stick it uh, from center off, get a run down the back stretch, and then if you're going fast enough, you could slide the car that you, um, you know, pulled even with and clear them into three and four, and then try to move on to the next one. So throughout the race, I was kind of making that work until I got behind Dob Meyer as North Dakota Mike was saying and I almost got him I was probably just a little bit too nice I threw a slider and I just didn't complete it and that was probably the difference at me you know having a shot at maybe running in the top five and where I finished in seven no complaints though I believe we ended up being hard charger we got faster every single time we got on track uh, we made changes to the car and that also made us better I'm not gonna lie you guys have to understand how difficult it is going to a new track and not having any notebook at all you basically just throw your baseline or as I talked about about, I compared this place to Skagit, so I really tried to keep it similar to what we do there. And I really think that worked and it was something to kind of fine tune on, but then also, you know, trying to learn the track from the, the driver's standpoint. You know, how does it race? Where can you carry speed? Where can you make up ground on other drivers? Where do people commonly make mistakes? And then how does it change throughout the duration of 25 laps? It just shows there's so many factors in this game, especially at the 410 sprint car level. So we just gotta do our best as a team to run with uh, all these guys that have a lot more experience at these places. I do want to give a big shout out to all my partners. We have Shane DeWald Trucking, RTR Diesel Performance, Pit Stop USA, Earth Environmental, Canopy Country, Fast 4 Media, Carson, Next Gen, Lafarge, ABC Powder Coating, Bull Sen Racing, Champion Car Wash, Veenendahl Trucking, and D-Ray Designs in Land and Transport. Without their help, uh, we would not be out here in the Midwest. And I also have an awesome crew, my dad, mom, Carly, Skyler, and uh, all you great fans. There's so many of you in uh, North, or South Dakota and there's a lot of you guys just in the Midwest and throughout the United States and the world that support THR it means the world I love you all and I uh, can't wait to continue now I think you know we had a good night a little bit of momentum just try to keep building on this as we have a you know a lot more tough races ahead of us and we're just gonna keep our heads down keep working hard and try to get closer to victory lane see you all in the next one deuces